if Jesus himself had a tattoo in the Bible, doesn't that mean that Christians themselves can have tattoos as well? Well, let's explore that in today's video. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here on the channel, my name is Israel and what we do here is we help you avoid deception or mastering the Bible. If you like the sounds of that, press the thumbs up button below the video and let's get into today's video. Number one, we're going to talk about in today's video, did Jesus really get a tattoo, Israel? Number two, what does the Bible say about tattoos? Number three, the origins of tattoos and whether or not it still applies thousands of years later. We are going to talk about things like henna, which is basically a temporary tattoo, which is not involving ink like a traditional tattoo actually does. And number five, we're going to talk about in this video as well. What about if you have a tattoo already, but you feel like it was actually wrong? Are you condemned? Let's get into it. Marks or printings on the body are not first mentioned in Leviticus. I want you to get that into your head first and foremost, right? So the first thing we see in regards to marks or printings on the body, in my opinion, is in the first book in the Bible, ironically, in Genesis. And we see in the early pages in Genesis, a man named Cain, many people know the story of Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother Abel. And Cain is basically driven out. And he basically is petitioning God saying, look, God, I don't want to go out because people are going to kill me when they find me. And the Bible talks about how God basically put a mark upon Cain. So if anyone saw him, they would not kill him. Now, just by reading the narrative in the text, it would seem to suggest to us that this was some sort of visible mark. So the first example, as I said, is Cain. Cain got a mark placed upon him by God himself. Now, why did God give Cain this particular mark on his body? Could it be a tattoo of some kind? Maybe, perhaps. The scripture tells us it was for protection. So it was not for leisure, it was not for idol worship or anything like this. God himself gave him this mark for protection. Now we get to Leviticus, which is the popular passage that many people will quote, where it says, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you, I the Lord. Now something to consider here, which is very vital, is the plain reading of this passage is clearly saying, God does not want them to print any marks or printings on their body, right? God goes on, if you read contextually around Leviticus, not just the passage before or the passage after, but he's really trying to get the Israelites out of pagan practices. Now, this gives us insights for two reasons and for both sides of this argument. For the person who says that you should not get tattoos because of what it says in Leviticus, they will say, based on this passage, that look, this is clearly a pagan practice and God was obviously against it, which is valid to some degree. But on the flip side, which is also valid and maybe even more so valid, if I'm going to be honest to what the Bible says, the Bible, if we're going to be consistent in Leviticus, talks about many other things which the Israelites should not do. You'll hear famous things like, look, don't cut your hair. Don't wear clothes with different fabrics. Don't eat medium rare meat, etc. You get the point. The fact of the matter is, if you're going to be consistent to saying, look, don't do this particular thing, there are many other laws in Leviticus that many Christians who are going to use this passage as a reason why you should not get tattoos will not listen to or not obey. So the question now becomes, why is this particular passage binding, but not have a particular passage binding? The reason this is significant as well is because this gives you a vital lesson about Bible study, right? There are some things which were contextually for a particular time, there are other things which were widespread, right? Now, this isn't to say if even if ta getting tattoos or printing marks on your body was just here for this particular time, that this means, you know what, it's now just all of a sudden acceptable. But one thing we do see is if there's something mentioned in the Old Testament and also mentioned in the New Testament, then it is more likely that this is clearly binding consistently through the Old Testament opposed to Something not being mentioned in the New Testament, but being mentioned in the Old Testament. Now, another passage, which I think is very vital, which many people do not bring up, in my opinion, is a passage from one of the major prophets, as they refer to today in the Old Testament, from a prophet called Ezekiel. There's a very clear and insightful passage in Ezekiel, where God is basically telling someone to basically go through the city with like an ink horn, a pen with ink, and basically mark up particular people in their foreheads. And ultimately, Anyone who in the city did not have this particular ink writing on the forehead would basically be wiped out. This was another example in the Bible about a mark or a printing being placed upon people. Again, why was this particular passage 
referencing a mark or a printing being put on the body in this particular place of forehead. What the Bible tells us in Ezekiel, it was about protection. Similar to the example we started with in regards to the Bible, in regards to Cain, just like in Cain's scenario, God had basically protected these particular people with some sort of visible printing or mark. So some people say, look, this is some sort of printing or mark which was acceptable. What we've seen so far, if we're going to be consistent, is these were two printings based on God basically protecting his people. They were not scenarios where men and women just went out and did it themselves. Okay, cool, Israel. We've talked about different scenarios in the Bible. We'll talk about more before we wrap up. But yes, many of these things we read about, like Leviticus, like you referenced Israel, was about pagan practices, which is true. Today, people are not getting tattoos for pagan practices. Now, many people, if I'm honest, probably are most likely not. Does that now mean you can now get a tattoo because if you're not doing these things based on pagan practices this is why i said reading through the whole bible will generally give you consensus about these kind of things the reason i'm bringing this up step by step is for you to consider and think about what does the bible teach us about printings on the body marks on the body i wouldn't personally just say look leviticus says this therefore do not get a tattoo my vantage point would be what does the Bible say contextually from the beginning to end about us putting printings on our body and, print and marks on our body? Well, for the most part, we see it's negatively inferred, it's pagan practices, pagan rituals like you see in, for example, First Kings, where these false prophets were basically cutting themselves and marking themselves up with marks as idol worship. Now, there are some passages which some people will use. Some people will refer to passages in Isaiah, for example, where some will even say Isaiah is basically writing that God is basically saying at some point there will be people who are basically led by the Holy Spirit and will basically tattoo their hands with the name of God. And they will say, look, that is the sign of a tattoo. Some will even say God himself has a tattoo because God also in Isaiah talks about how he's graven the Israelites on the palms of his hands. I wouldn't isolate these particular passages. I would say, okay, in the whole of the context, what is the Bible saying? Well, in one passage, God is talking about people that are led by the Spirit. Is he specifically saying people are tattooing their hands? Or is he just saying they are writing on their hands a particular name in regards to reverence? So would that mean, you know what, Christians can get tattoos if it's glorifying God? I would think personally, if someone tried to say, look, I'm going to get a tattoo which is glorifying God, that would be, in my opinion, the only justifiable case based on what the Bible says in regard to getting a tattoo. In regard to the latter example in Isaiah about God having engraved the Israelites on the palms of his hands, that could be a reference, a subtle allusion to the crucifixion, Jesus being God in the flesh, that is. But also, again, this is God himself doing this. Now, I know I talked about to start this video about Jesus having a tattoo. We'll get to that before we wrap up today's video. Don't get it twisted. But before we do that, let's go to the last book in the Bible, Revelation. And what do we see? Similar to the passage I brought up in regards to Ezekiel earlier, we see something which is like a sort of subtle allusion to that kind of scenario in regards to protection. Because early in the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about how people were ultimately being marked in their foreheads with the seal of God. Now, we don't know personally if this was some sort of physical visible mark for everyone to see, or if this was some sort of spiritual mark, which people could not see physically with physical eyes. But let's say for example, it's a physical mark. Again, this would fall under the scenario of Isaiah, this would fall under the scenario of Ezekiel, and this would fall under the scenario of Genesis with Cain, where God himself is marking people as a sign of protection, because the people that didn't have those marks would ultimately be plagued in Revelation. We also see another popular example in Revelation, which is the mark of the beast. And this is a mark that's ultimately in the right hand or in the forehead. Some people reference this as on the, the right hand or on the forehead. But it's a mark now that's basically encouraged to be taken. And if you do not take this mark, you are not going to be protected. Now, before we get into the whole Jesus having a tattoo, all of these examples were tattoos, if they were tattoos, right? If you wanted to make a case like that, based on protection, right? And I'm pretty certain that many people, the majority of people today are not going to be getting tattoos for protection. A passage like Isaiah, for example, if someone wants to use that passage, that particular scenario is describing a, a, a byproduct of devotion to the Lord. 
So at best, in my opinion, if you were going to use these passages, it would be, you know, I'm having a tattoo and it would be something that glorifies the name of the Lord because it ultimately references in that passage as well, the name of the Lord. Why would I get a tattoo? Why do I want a tattoo? Many people just want a tattoo to copy or because it's the in thing now. I would always question someone who wants a tattoo and ask them, why do you want a tattoo? And if they could not find a justifiable logical reason, I would encourage them not to do it. Now, you may have been surprised when you saw this video and you heard me say Jesus had a tattoo. And I want you to understand that there are people that, whether in jest or even people seriously, commenting and believing and saying that Jesus had a tattoo. What they're basically referencing is a passage in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. When it says, Jesus is coming and it says, and he hath on vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And people basically say, look, Jesus had a tattoo on his thigh. They're the same people that most likely are going to scream from the rooftops context in Leviticus. I won't reference context in Revelation, which is very telling. Because even as you read it, what did it say? It talked about a name written on his vesture, which is ultimately like an, an outward upper garment, a vest, a shirt, a robe, some people will reference it as, and on his thigh. So contextually, what it's kind of referencing is would be an upper garment and on his thigh, ultimately the lower garment. Contextually, that would be the better contextual meaning. So it's basically like a uniform, like a branding on a top and bottom garment ultimately not necessarily on his literal thigh so seriously thinking about this i wouldn't agree with people that say jesus had a tattoo and people that try and use that as a justification as to why they should get a tattoo full disclosure i personally don't have any tattoos i don't really get excited by tattoos and this kind of gets into the whole henna situation one of the things for me i'm really sensitive to is a tattoo is permanent for the most case right and if I get a tattoo today, right, or 15, 10, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, for example, who is to say in 10 years time, in 15 years time, in 20 years time, in 50 years time is when I'm old and gray, God willing, that I still appreciate those same kind of things. People today get married, for example, and they say it's still definitely them part. And then they get divorced three months, I've even heard in recent time. People get divorced in five years, in 10 years, etc. So people, for example, cannot stick to a marital spouse forever, but somehow believe the tattoo they get today will be something they're really interested in forever as well. It's reasons like this that I kind of consider and think, you know what? It's not really a wise decision in my personal opinion. And based on the scripture, I don't feel there's enough in the scripture to, to really kind of validate getting a tattoo, right? If you did get a tattoo, I don't believe you're going to be condemned. If you had a tattoo previously and you've now changed your ways and think, you know what? Now it's wrong. I don't think you're condemned either. The big thing about tattoos for many people is just the fact that it's got pagan origins in many cases. And some people believe based on the origins, it goes back to blood covenants and blood sacrifices, etc. with the shedding of blood and the ink, etc., going into your body and obviously having an adverse effect. This is why short term tattoos, for example, like henna are encouraged or um, questioned. Can I get temporary tattoos etc now a temporary tattoo would obviously be much more preferable in my opinion because it's obviously not permanent and one would say look it's not a permanent thing it's just a temporary thing and there's no marks being printed on me it's just like paint which is easily much more easily defensible than in my opinion than printing a full-time mark on your body but one thing i will say about a temporary tattoo like henna and those kind of things is they also have origins in pagan practices and other religions which are not christian related i personally would encourage you not to get a tattoo personally by the end of the day whatever decision you make is up to you 